Thanks for coming out of your busy schedule. Uh, this is the very first time the winter uh, resuming our great uh, association research seminar series, and uh, we have uh, scheduled a total of six talks. Uh, this will be the first talk by Professor uh, Dejing Do in uh, the Department of Computer and Information Science, and Professor Do uh, on is directly from Yale University. And he came to join uh, you all about 13 years ago. Uh, and he's got a uh, bunch of, I mean, he's initiated a lot of interesting projects, working with other scholars in multiple disciplines. And his talk today is about kind of deep learning uh, to model, you know, the human behavior uh, prediction with the explanations. So, uh, which can be applied to, uh, you know, health informatics and other areas as well. So, uh, please join me in welcoming Professor Zhou. Uh, thanks for the introduction. As it's my great pleasure to, to come here. I mean, we are not that far away, right? <laughs> but in the shoes is uh, Allen Hall, and uh, I we should do more of this kind of. Uh, exchange for, for our ideas and, and our work. So uh, today's talk, um, I, I will give some kind of introduction first, right? So because I'm not sure how many of you know ontology, right? So and uh, logic based, semantic web, logic graph, right? This kind of uh, terminology we use, but I think more or less you guys may heard that deep learning become kind of buzzword as same as big data now. Uh, so very, very uh, impressive ach achievement in, in that field. So what we have done is we try to combine the, the ontology stuff and the deep learning stuff together and uh, do um, some work, okay? And previously we have done something related to the electronic health record, EHR. Uh, currently we are focused on NIH project trying to uh, uh, predict uh, human behaviors, right? So in a health social network, okay? Uh, the general idea is not only just trying to do uh, better predictions or annotations, uh, we try to see whether we can use ontology to, to help uh, better explain the, the deep learning results and the models, right? That's something people uh, criticize deep learning work is as kind of black box, okay? So we try to, try to make it more, more explainable, okay? So uh, recently we're going to uh, uh, be, uh, establish an uh, NSF center called uh, Big Learning. We, I will go into talk about it in the end of the talk. Yeah. So um, that's, uh, that's roughly the, uh, the outline. Okay. So first about ontology. So uh, how many of you heard of this terminologies? But if you are in philosophy <laughs> domain, you, you know what that means, right? But uh, in computer science, actually, we use it uh, as a way to present the the formal semantics, uh, for example, any domain you have some uh, uh, concept, right? Have relationships, right? So we need kind of uh, very formal specifications, right? So if we just use a graph to represent uh, uh, one ontology, for example, this is a genealogy domain, then you, you definitely need an individual kind of person, right? So you need the families, you need the events, uh, talking about those relationships, right? So, but in the in an individual, definitely you, you roughly have two kinds of individual, male and female, right? So but now we have more more kinds, right? So yeah, but anyway, I, I'm I'm going to politics in today. I'm talking about the gender design, right? So we have two kinds of individuals. So then we have the um, um, the the event, and then we have, then we we have marriage, suppose marriage, uh, divorce, and death and birth, right? So this is different kinds of event. Then we have uh, the relationship is any families, right? So if you have a, a marriage, then we can really call families, right? So then each families will have husband and wife, right? So relationships. Um, and then definitely it's possible, right? So unfortunately, maybe it could be divorce, right? So then that's, that's the relationships, okay? So this is, uh, if you use a graph, right? So it's not really formal, what is called a formal way, but uh, in ontology, actually, we can represent the more formal way we call the axioms or rules. So that's good so example is so if there is a marriage event, that there will be a family related to husband and wife. 
properties, right? So in the graph, actually, you, can sh you cannot really show this uh, kind of only if or if only if, right? So this, this is you have to written in some formal language. So one language is we use currently in the uh, computer science domain, uh, it's called uh, R, Web Ontology Languages, right? It's kind of W3C standards. And so, uh, for example, we can, we can put this relationship, like an individual is one kind of person, and male is one kind of individual, and male related to a certain sex, right? So that's a, uh, uh, that, that's a formal languages, right? So you, if you, even you, 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 you don't know what exactly, oh, you, you see this kind of syntax, XM, XML, right? So if you have written some uh, uh, HTML files, and you, sometimes you, you, you may use a XML, right? So this is a syntax XML, right? But in database, actually, uh, we, can, we can use database to define those similar things, right? For example, uh, if there's a genealogy database talking about the uh, royal families in, in Europe, right? So then you see those kind of individual titles, sex, and uh, their marriage related to different kind of persons, right? So that's, uh, uh, that's in database, okay? So you can use database language like SQL languages to, uh, to define the similar things, no any problem, okay? So, uh, but the difference here is for, for, as I said, ontologies, you can, you can, uh, you can use uh, the, uh, the more complex logic to represent the axioms, okay? And then uh, with ontologies, actually, uh, we, can, we can have this kind of uh, uh, logic base and a logic graph to, to, to be built based on the, 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 the kind of template or schemas, okay? So that's a kind of, uh, uh, even you are not in computer science, more or less maybe you, 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 you can use this kind of word net to, uh, to, uh, to use those uh, terminologies they defined, right? So in uh, originally it's a project from Princeton, right? So OpenSci originally from the, uh, the uh, Stanford group. Uh, Freebase and uh, now actually bought by, uh, by, by, uh, by Google, right? So it's a kind of Google logic graph actually based on Freebase, right? So Yago is, uh, uh, is knowledge base used in the Watson's uh, AI system, uh, Watson system, right? They kind of uh, uh, beat, uh, uh, beat the, 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 the champion of the Jeopardy uh, uh, in the Jeopardy games, right? So that's, um, that's what knowledge base used, okay? Uh, so this actually related to a, a, a kind of a, a idea or vision in roughly in 2000 that people try to uh, change the the human readable HTML kind of web to uh, machine readable, and also machine can do some uh, inference, okay, and do finish some task. For example, in current web, if you want to buy a, a, a air ticket, then you need to go to the web to check the the things and and read the read the different price, right? So and different uh, kind of uh, uh, itineraries, then you you try to decide which one you want to take. Okay, but in the, in the semantic web ID, actually the web-based agent kind of uh, a software robot can help you to finish this kind of uh, searching and also comparisons, right? Uh, but definitely there's a trust issues, so whether you want to give your credit card <laughs> information to your, to your uh, software agent, right? So like an app in your, uh, in your uh, smartphone, right? So that's, a, uh, that's another issues, okay? But, but this is kind of big, uh, big vision, it's still not there yet, but anyway, the, the guy T. Berners-Lee actually uh, bring this vision to, uh, in Tucson. Uh, he also the inventor of uh, WWW, right? He was actually the last year, 2017, uh, the, uh, the Turing Award uh, winner. So because his work in the WWW, so he invented the web, right? Okay. But he also have this vision. We're still working on that, not there yet. However, one domain kind of pretty success for ontology stuff or, or kind of uh, logic and inference or knowledge graph or knowledge web, uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge uh, base is uh, the, uh, the, the biomedical domain, okay? And so uh, I think most successful one is, is a, a gene ontology, okay? So this ontology uh, basically describes the uh, three, three part or kind of information for gene uh, domain, for example, cellular component, molecular function, biological process, okay? 
the relationship is very simple, right? So because uh, basically they use kind of easier part of describe the, those concepts in gene domain, okay? But the, the, the use is uh, very um, uh, neat uh, because when you have different kind of gene databases, right? Talking about different species, for example, at, if you go to the biology department, you see the three statues <laughs> in their hall, right? So remember <laughs> what they are. They are actually liver fish and the mouse and <laughs> food for fly. <laughs> so you have different species and how, how people, when the people did the experiment, they have the data, how can they share the data together? Okay. This gene ontology actually become the kind of operator to cover all different kind of species. Okay. Then you can, you can link one piece of data in, uh, in liver fish database to the, another piece of data in the mouse database. Okay, similar for human gene. So that's that's pretty successful effort. And uh, also other biomedical, for example, in medicine, right? So and also drug, right? So and so they have this similar effort. Okay, but gene, I think, go go ontology is uh, most successful uh, so far. Okay, and I was uh, in Stanford for my first sabbatical. I mean, I haven't done my second <laughs> yet, but this is my first sabbatical. I was there uh, working in this group. Uh, uh, they have um, a center called the National Center of Biomedical Ontology, supported by NIH, and they, they host <coughs> kind of more than 300 ontologies, and uh, then they actually they, they build um, each of them hundreds of thousands of concepts, right? So they, they also build the mappings across different ontologies. That's a very good effort. Okay. Well, this is just a kind of a tutorial and the introductions and, and any if any questions or think about your domain, right? Whether you may have ontology, you may may not, right? So, and, but that that could be something we, we can talk about. Uh, but I will show that how we use ontology in some way. Okay. So um, this is kind of research problem research uh, we have done, and we, we kind of focus on two things, right? One thing is, is you have this ontology is defined, right? So you you define or you, uh, from some national center you can download it easily because they are kind of web web uh, document, right? So no problem. But how can you com combine uh, that ontology with the data you are dealing with, right? Because if you only have single body, you have a database, you only have a schema, that database is not usable. Only when you put the data into the database, right? So then that database is a database. Similar things here. You, if you only have ontologies, it's not really useful. When you have data put into the logic base, okay, logic graph based on ontologies, right? That make the everything useful. So then, how can you represent those things together? Okay, so there are uh, two things. Okay, from the kind of a machine learning point of view, we can e either use kind of a big a hypergraph right, to represent the both ontology graph and, and the data graph together. Or we can use a kind of what we call a logic embedding, kind of embed or change the ontology and the data together into uh, some vectors or matrix. Right? So that's something uh, we can do two ways. Okay? So I will give an example like our previous, previous work based on the uh, we call RDF hypergraph okay? uh, for the electronic health record. Um, but this one, I think I just give short introductions. We're not going into detail. The second part um, we are interested in is when you put them together, that I mean you, you work, your job is done. Right? So I mean, uh, one way to think about it is uh, how can you learn them together? Okay, how can you do whatever machine learning task, predictions, suggestions, right? so, or, or associations? Right? So this kind of task, how, how, can, you, how can you use them together? Okay? So that's a, that's a uh, give a motivation example of why we only put things together. Okay, so for example, Swanson like 20 or 30 years ago, he he did a study just try to study those kind of medical uh, papers, journal papers, right? So then uh, he studied several uh, hundred of papers, and he found that, uh, that uh, uh, among 20 around 25 papers uh, that those people are talking about the fish oil and the blood change together in same paper. Okay. So then it's understandable because fish oil normally can cause reduction of uh, blood viscosities, right? So that's, that's good things, right? So uh, no, no, not, no surprise. Then also, uh, he also found the first 34 paper talking about blood change and the renal syndrome together. Renal syndrome is a disease, very painful, but if you uh, 
uh, if your blood changes in a certain way, then it actually will kind of reduce your pain. Okay, that's that's no surprise. But it's surprise to uh, Swanson is there's no paper around seven hundred papers you talking talking about the fish oil and real syndrome together. Right. So that brings uh, the the question to uh, Swanson that oh what happened right? So since these two things together, these two things together, but that's these two things never be together, okay? Then he kind of proposed this hypothesis back to the doctors. The doctor finally figured out actually fish oil is good medicine for renal syndrome, okay? This is just like Facebook or LinkedIn. From time to time, he suggests you uh, to talk with someone, okay? Although you don't know that one directly, right? For example, uh, I know him, he know your, your department head, but I never know your department head. Maybe we should talk, right? Something like that, okay? So, uh, but the, uh, the, the, the problem here is for, for traditional data mining, so normally we, we kind of count the frequencies, right? How many times fish oil and blood change, how many times real syndrome and blood change, and how many times fish oil and real syndrome. Then for this is zero, right? Then normally we say, okay, this is not useful, not interesting, okay? Uh, but what we did is we tried to find a way to figure out that how close the fish oil and the central, real central oil is, okay? So the, this is, a, because Swartz has done the study, we, there's no use or not meaningful, we, 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 we try to study the, the, uh, this uh, fish oil example again. What we did is we, um, uh, when I was in Stanford, actually, um, my, my first PhD student, he, he also, he was there as his, his postdoc. Um, last year he joined Arizona State as a faculty. Uh, so then, what we have done is um, uh, we use the Stanford hospitals. They have a kind of state warehouse, not only database. They call it Stride. Okay, they have a, that is 2012, right? So it's like they already have over 70 years of worth of data, all the kind of all the electronic record, right? So definitely before that, definitely they have the papers, right? So about papers, it's hard to convert, right? So it's they already have. Uh, EHR for 70 years, they have 1.6 million patients, 50 million of encounters, right? So blah, 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 large number of data, okay? So they also, we have the subset of NCB ontology data we can use, for example, drugs and, and uh, drug, uh, uh, the, the, and other, others like uh, procedures and, and also disease, right? So then we can, we can use, okay? So this is a general idea that is we try to first to use these ontologies, right? For example, for uh, for, for procedural drug and disease, right? So ontologies. Then we choose some uh, terminology from PubMed because PubMed talking about those most recent research papers, right? Uh, in a way that you even we have a lot of uh, concept in this ontology, but some concepts are not really interesting because they has been well studied. For example, aspirin, right? So we, there's no way you. You want to study aspirin again. So we try to study something new, okay? Then for those kind of new terminologies in PubMed as overlap with ontologies, then we try to use those uh, concepts to annotate the, the electronic health record. For example, um, I'm not sure you can see, but this talking about some, some record. Uh, this is a 31 years old male come to kind of do uh, to see doctors, right? So uh, he may have a headache or uh, fevers, blah, 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 right? So, or fractures of bones, right? So whatever. So we use this kind of uh, uh, important concept to annotate what concept mentioned in the, in, in the, in the electronic health record, right? But be careful, right? Sometimes uh, we have to care about the negations because if the doctor intentionally say, uh, this patient does not have fever, right? So then you, don't, you should not use a fever to annotate that, right? So because he does not have fever, okay? So that's really the basically finally come to the, the the simple table, right? So even you're not in computer science, you understand this kind of uh, format simple because we have those concepts, right? Then we just for each patient record, right? P1, P2, P3, we just see whether this concept mentioned or not mentioned, right, in his record. Okay, so we have one zero, one zero uh, tables. With that kind of table, we can do some data mining job, right? Okay, so. But the problem, as I mentioned, right, so you have this ontology, you have the data, right, how can you combine them together? What we have done is basically we, uh, we have put, uh, we first, we can put some uh, ontology graphs, right, to show 
uh, which concept is a subclass of another concept, right? So this kind of graph, okay? At the same time, we can have that uh, uh, data graphs, right? For example, for this rec record one, right? Mention a certain concept, right? That's what I said, one zero, one zero, one zero, right? So you have the big graph about those uh, patient record, okay? So then the good thing is actually, because they are both talking about those concepts uh, in ontologies in the domain, then we just simply put them together. Now this become one uh, hypergraph to cover both ontology and, and, and data. Right. Then we can run different kinds of uh, uh, graph-based um, algorithms or tools, right? So to, to do the jobs we want to do. Okay, so uh, one job we have done is we try to see this as any two concepts, okay? Or two disease, two drugs, or, or drug disease, right? So how close they are. Okay, then we actually uh, use different kind of mechanism. One mechanism actually is based on the, we call the community time, that in a graph, any, any one point random walk to another point, how much time you spend, right? Okay, that's kind of, for, for this kind of time, based on time we found is those uh, frequently mentioned uh, uh, drugs, right, or disease always rank it high. But this is not our interest because we try to find something hidden, right? Okay, because this, you, you know that, everyone knows that, so it's not interesting, right? Okay, now we use another wheel called the Laplace uh, uh, Plus, right? So then we actually find something, it's not that frequent. For example, we have about a half million record, okay? These two, terminologies or items we call it, mentioned only 300 times together. But they rank the number one in our, our study, okay? Then similar number two, number three, but we don't know whether it's interesting enough, right? So, I mean, you can, we can do something, but we are not uh, doctors, right? So then we send this result back to Stanford group, ask their medical doctors to see whether this makes sense to them. Okay, they said, okay, actually makes sense because these two drugs both relate to the same disease. Okay, second one both relate to headache, third one both relate to rapid sequence in uh, incubation. Okay, so this is a kind of interesting result. However, this is what we call the unsupervised learning because we don't know what's the stand golden standards. Okay, whether this one should be ranked number one or this one should be ranked number one, we don't know, okay. And just like a Google, if you do a search, right, why certain link is number one or certain link in its first page, okay, that's, that's unsupervised, okay. But this at least makes sense to the medical doctors, okay. So uh, this is uh, the first, uh, the previous work more likely we have done, and also based on the kind of, we call the uh, hypergraph, okay, work. And then uh, the current uh, working, uh, sorry, uh, our methodologies, we try to, uh, Utilize the most recent work as uh, as uh, as uh, the, the um, uh, large embeddings. Okay, try to embed those uh, whatever uh, ontology concept relationships and and axioms rules into vector space or matrix. Right. So then try to do something. Okay, this embedding has been used uh, uh, not only in in the domain I'm talking about, also the natural language processing, information structures, uh, the Enrichment of larger base, for example, lot of, lot of time in, 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 uh, in search engine now you try to figure out what's the birthday of certain person, right? So then now actually, for example, uh, 10 years ago, if you in Google, you search Lady Gaga birthday, right? Then Google will give you the <coughs> pages, include the information of Lady Gaga and his, uh, her birthday, or mention the birthday, this, comes, this link, this string, right? But now Google can directly give you what, what is the birthday of Lady Gaga, right? So that's, uh, that's kind of what people are doing. We call it enrichment of logic based logic graph. Then the QA system, for example, a lot, lot of uh, uh, system can answer your questions kind of more automatically. Then last one is deep learning is something I'm going to talk about in the second part of my, my talk, okay? So, um, uh, deep learning, you may heard of the terminologies, right? So, and uh, uh, it's become uh, very popular in the uh, uh, in the academic, uh, roughly in two thousand, beginning since two thousand six, then two thousand ten will uh, become very very hot. But come to the the, the general audience, actually, it's more like because two thousand sixteen, um, uh, deep learning 
the C, uh, works to uh, play the, the Go game, Go, right? That's a game actually uh, invented by Chinese, but very popular in uh, Japan, Korea, and, and China, right? So, and uh, Go game is the last game actually, uh, we call open game and with, uh, with uh, uh, clear um, rules that hum uh, computer didn't beat human. Okay, but 2016, with the deep learning um, and reinforcement learning, actually, uh, the AlphaGo, right? So uh, DeepMind uh, in Google group, they built AlphaGo to beat the, uh, the human champion, right? Li Shidao, right? So that's, uh, then last year, actually, uh, the uh, AlphaGo played with the number one in the world, right? So uh, Ke Jie in China, so then this year, actually, oh, no, still last year, the end of last year, um, AlphaGo actually, the at at the early version of AlphaGo, they need a large number of uh, training data, right? For example, the the the, the games, other uh, human players, right? World champion players, right? They have millions of uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, games train the system, okay? But last year, the most uh, uh, recent systems, uh, they, they got a second uh, major paper is talking about uh, AlphaGo Zero. They don't need any training data from uh, human players. They can train them it by itself. Uh, so you have basically two, two versions of the, of, of the AlphaGo. They train by themselves. They don't need any human training. Okay? So that's, that's pretty impressive. But why it becomes successful, the, the point here is at uh, early days for this new network uh, work, they only can work for uh, one or two layers, okay? But with the uh, computation power, especially GPU, this kind of uh, uh, development, we can work for multiple layers or even very, very large number of layers, okay, uh, of a new network, okay? So then why it, it, it works now, besides that also they have some new discovery or new theory to support that. For example, if you do the image classification for human, right? So you, you, you see whether it's cat or dog, okay? So you just do this simple, simple job. Uh, then we actually figure out that you, you don't make a decision directly in the human brain, but you try to first figure out what is the edge, what is the corners, uh, basically the shape of the, of the, of the image. Then you also see the colors, right? So this kind of low-level features actually, if talking about shape or colors, you don't need the human label it. So for example, we just need the human to say, okay, uh, this training data is this is a cat, this is a dog, right, blah blah, right? That's all you, your label looks like. But we don't need the human to put the, the, the shape for you. Okay, so the system can automatically learn those low-level features, okay, edge and uh, so. In a way that you can use more, more layers to figure, to use those kind of uh, uh, unlabeled, but easily figure out the low-level low features. And with large number of training data, right? Finally, for, for image classifications, actually, a uh, computer now with a deep learning system already better than, than human. Okay, the accuracy better than human. Okay. So uh, this is uh, one task, right? Similar for fish detections, okay? Now, you, you read a lot of news talking about oh some some criminals has been uh, out for many years. Finally, pe uh, p police got he, got him or got her, right? So because we we can we can find the kind of similar face even after so many years, right? So they still find the feature match, right? So this pretty impressive. Also terrorist similar, right? That's also medical, right? So if you do the uh, uh, Agnosis, right? So the, for cancers or tumors, right? So this kind of uh, heart disease, right? So it's very successful. Okay, so there are some major uh, two uh, uh, deep learning models, right? So the for the images, most likely use a convolutional neural network, right? So then for the, some sequence data, is uh, called the uh, recurrent neural network, and also there's another RN called the recursive, right? So LSTM is one kind of RN, and then we have deep neural network that we are talking about. Uh, later, as uh, one model we call the uh, Boltzmann machine or restricted Boltzmann machine. Okay, the, the other 
work related to the uh, embedding called auto encoding. Okay, now but why we we want to? This is seems like okay. You have the data, whatever label unlabeled, right? You you do something, and then finally you, you do the classification, right? So why we talk about ontologies? The motivation here is uh, the current design of deep learning models normally is kind of flat. Okay, you have all the features we have, or all, all the pixels in the images we put into models. Okay, then we do the classification. So that's what we're trying to do here. Okay, but since those features itself have some uh, relationship, as I mentioned, right? So whatever uh, individual families, right? So they have those relationships. But deep learning, typical deep learning work, they don't consider a relationship. They just put everything as input features. Okay, so we try to do more kind of hierarchy or, or structure way. Okay, a second or uh, bigger vision here, motivation is uh, uh, we are still working on is. Uh, the deep learning model is more like a black box. Okay, so you get a good accuracy, but you don't know why. <laughs> okay, so we, we try to see whether we can use ontology to help explain what happened. Okay, but this is uh, in general, this is more like the um, uh, the uh, the idea is how can we uh, use uh, human domain knowledge together uh, with the data to help the, uh, deep learning model. Okay, then. Um, I always give the examples that think about how not computer learn, how human learn the things, right? So if if you want to teach your uh, uh, your little kid don't drink hot water directly, okay, you will not just let your kids keep keep, keep trying to drink hot water then hurt him or her then him or her or she will know we cannot drink hot water directly, right? So normally you will do is you will tell her or tell him, right, when he or she began to understand your languages, right, okay. Then if she or he forget sometime, right, then he or she will hurt him, himself, right. So then you know, okay, my father or my mom mentioned that, right. So this is a combined process, knowledge driven, data driven, okay. Learning never be the pure data driven, okay. That's my point. Okay, so that's the reason. If you already have the knowledge about certain things, you should try to utilize that. It's not just that data to see. Yes, data can say a lot of things. Okay, pure data driven for some task maybe already work, right? But why not? We just use the prior knowledge to help us. Okay, that's the point. Okay, so then uh, the the task we are going to talk about uh, next. I think next but next ten minutes. I think. Talking about the, the project we are doing that uh, it's an NH project trying to use ontology and deep learning together to do human behavior prediction. Okay, so we hope we actually we can do explanation as well. Right? That's the uh, ongoing work. Okay, so uh, I, I will go to uh, the little details and uh, about how co how can we design these deep learning models. Okay, this model itself, deep learning model called the Boltzmann machine. Or retrieval of the machine because uh, uh, we have different uh, neurons, right? Boltzmann machine basically any neuron related to any neuron. Okay, that's a, uh, that's a, um, the scenario. Some scenarios, okay. But for one scenario, also we have clear layers. Okay, we have a variable layer, we have a hidden layer. Then we have the interlinks between the two layers, but we don't have the uh, the inside of uh, each same layers, we don't have any links. Okay, that's called the ratio of the machine. Okay, so what we want to do here is the first step is based on the super concept. For example, this is called recreation sports, right? And then we we build a, a, a Boltzmann machine or ratio of machine. Okay, then uh, move to next step is uh, we try to uh, attach the softmax layer uh, for this top concept, include the units. Okay, from the the sub concept. Okay, then we can try to combine uh, this uh, top concept with, with two sub concepts. For example, sports related auto racing and the bad and the bad uh, games, right? So, but you can go, keep going, right? Bad and bad games can be uh, hockey, can be baseball, auto racing can be automobile racing, and also motorcycle racing, right? So then, uh, what what we try to do here is we kind of combine these two. Uh, reachable machine, right? Readable layers, hidden layers, right? So then, with the super concept and the sub concept together. Okay, so that's the general idea. So I, 
I don't want to go detail. So you can keep going and until you finish all the hierarchy or concepts. Okay, so that's the uh, design. Okay, and then basically um, this we kind of call the hi uh, hierarchy representations of deep learning mode. Also, we can use any uh, um, uh, logic reasonings or, or, or ontology reasonings can help the, the, the step. Okay. At the beginning, we, we worry about the need that uh, if we do this kind of design, whether we need to uh, take a lot of time for training, okay? And uh, because a range is flat, right? So uh, then we actually finally the, the experiment shows that we, we, we don't. We, we kind of just use a similar way as a, as, a, as a training process and uh, also didn't take much more time, okay? But we show the advantages, we get actually better accuracy, okay? So uh, this is a, a project found in 2013. We are still working on that. We call it SMASH, okay, semantic mining of activity, social, and health data. It is uh, uh, based on the data from the, um, the, the, the uh, overweight and obesity uh, uh, domain or, or problem. Okay. So this is kind of roughly the, uh, uh, the whole uh, states, right? So what's the percentage of the um, adults have uh, overweight and, uh, and uh, obese, actually it's obese, right? So then uh, the, the r red one, right, is kind of uh, bad, right? So you have more uh, ob ob obese uh, people, okay? So, uh, but the, the problem not only just how, how many of them, okay? The problem is actually kind of increase the rate, increase so quickly, okay? Originally just 23, uh, like, uh, like uh, ten, uh, 10 or 20 years ago, now it's, uh, it's uh, 31, okay. So if you think about uh, the overweight on B is more likely uh, genetic reasons, right? So then you should not get that kind of increase, okay. So uh, in 2007, there's a New England Med Journal of Medicine, there's a famous paper uh, uh, published by Christy uh, uh, Takis and Fowler uh, that they found actually if your mutual friend, mutual friend means you think someone's friend, someone thinks you are friend or mutual. If your mutual friend is obese or overweight, the probability you become obese or overweight is much, much higher than if your siblings or husband, wife, or, or neighbors are overweight or obese. Okay. So that's kind of controversial uh, result because if you ask your guess, then you will say, oh, more likely uh, your parents or your, your siblings, right? So like families, but actually friends <laughs> make the difference. <laughs> so so uh, this is the kind of figures to show that after uh, 12,000 people, so after 32 years, uh, what's their BMI, right? So how, and uh, how their social relationships, okay? But we try to do something in a positive way. This is show the kind of bad things uh, spread in the social network, right? What we have, we try to do is, if, if, uh, if your friends exercise, do exercise, right, so do sports, whether it can bring you to, to do more exercise or sports, okay? So uh, at, at 2010, actually, uh, because that time, if we put this kind of sensor into the, the smartphone, it will run out of battery quickly. That's why we have a sep separate kind of sensors. Then you can measure uh, your, your, your steps, right, you walk, you run. In 2010, not that part also, not novel. Now uh, you, you have Fitbit or a lot of kind of wearable device can do that, or even your smartphone, no problem. But that time actually, when all the people in our study actually they form a small social network. They talk each other, they communicate each other, they encourage each other, actually that part is new, okay? So then uh, what we easily found is the number of your friends is kind of a positive social, uh, associated with or correlated with the, the uh, uh, average steps you walk with run per day, okay? Even you're not in computer science, right? Even you're not in the field, you see this is clear, right? Okay, this social network side will just use number of friends, okay? But you can argue it's not because you have more friends, you, you, you do more exercise, actually you do more exercise than you know more friends, right? Okay, so that's what we try to figure out, okay? And, uh, uh, who is, uh, what is the cause, right? It's a causality studies, okay? So that's our research aim. We try to figure out what is the uh, key factors or reasons spread the social network, and we try to also use ontology to de develop 
this, uh, define those kind of concept relationships, right? And also uh, we try to find the kind of uh, social structures, right? So uh, maximally uh, 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 spread, uh, uh, enable the spreading okay, of awareness. Okay? So we have this kind of data set, behavior data, right? Number of steps you walk around, and the social communications. Uh, so this is part actually very uh, important because a lot of uh, similar studies, you may not have this, okay? Also, we, we also have a biomarker data. Every two, three months, the, the, pa uh, the patient will go to, uh, went to the labs to do the blood test, okay? That part of data, actually, we haven't used much yet. Okay, we use some of them. HDL, IDL, right, so, uh, but not, not all the features, okay? The first study we tried is we tried to just see the, how the people uh, kind of talk, uh, work with each other. We find that people can be divided by three groups. One group of people, they, they like to influence others, right? Next circle one. One kind of people got to be influenced by other people's their behavior. But there's a group of people, like this kind of triangle ones, they just uh, kind of isolated in some way. Whatever their friends doing has no influence to me. Okay? But anyway, we see some of them has been influenced, some of them like to influence others, right? So you now what we did is we tried to see, okay, based on your social networks, okay, your relationships, what well, what you did, whether you do exercise or not exercise, right? And we try to predict the next day or next week whether you want to pre uh, do exercise or not. Okay? So um, there's uh, some other model has been doing more likely regression based models, a uh, Gaussian based model before, right? So there are some issues. Then we use this uh, kind of uh, uh, deep learning models, try to combine three kind of features, right? Person behaviors, biomarkers, social communication together, okay? And uh, that's something we can do, like a, we call the flat way. Also, we can do the ontology way based on what I discussed, the general ideas, right? So we have those hierarchies or concepts, right? So then, uh, we, we organize the, 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 the deep learning models right, in, in a more hierarchical way. You can Im imagine that we have three parts of information put together, then we have hierarchies right, in these dimensions, right, this more, kind of more, uh, more, more structured way. Okay? So then we do the learning and the trainings in the regular way, then we finally get to the result. Okay? So um, then if we use a tr uh, other, other method, right, people method, right, this is roughly the accuracy for this uh, uh, 34 weeks of data. What we do accuracy is we use 10 weeks data to train the models, right? Then we predict what uh, number 11 week looks like, right? Then we compare with what exactly happened. Then we know the prediction accuracy for different persons, right? Okay. Then we, we move the window from uh, number 2 to number 11, right? So predict number 12, right? Okay. right? So then we, we, we finally we got this kind of average of accuracy, okay? So then, this is non-deep non -deep learning models, this is a deep learning models. We already receive, receive very good prediction uh, in performance, right? So an increase of 15%, okay? But if we add ontology kind of hierarchy there, then we get another 3%, okay? So you can argue whether you, you, you get, get enough, right? Because you pay the price to do the hierarchy design, right? You have ontology, right? So, but that is based on the, uh, the, the the kind of realizations we see this kind of training or, or learning is actually show this kind of relationship of concept, right? That means something uh, uh, interesting. Then also we kind of want to see not only in the behavior predictions, right? How about the traditional data? Because the, that, uh, that uh, uh, human behavior data is kind of private. We cannot share with anyone else, right? The IRB, you, you, if you, uh, Know that. Then, but this kind of data is uh, everyone can download from the web, right? So they use in, in, in the uh, nature language processing uh, task, right, or benchmark. So for example, this is a kind of news, right? Then you want to, we want to classif classify those news articles to different types or topics, like company, sports, social, science, okay? Then with ontologies, actually we can, we are kind of, uh, amongst four topics, three of them with ontology is better than, uh, than without ontologies, right? Only one, for some reason, so it didn't beat it, right? And then um, uh, we also use another task data, they are they call it sentiment analysis, basically try to see whether this kind of uh, text information is positive or negative, right? So then we see that with ontologies, definitely better than without ontologies, okay? 
Then recently also use another deep learning model. This is based on, again, based on restricted bus machine, RBM. Then with RN, actually, we see that all the, we use the ontologies, actually, rough, roughly we got the, the best. Okay, similar here for sentiment analysis also with the quantity we got better. Okay, this also shows actually RN actually better than, uh, than RBM because uh, RN is kind of good for a process sequence data, but uh, text files actually basically sequences, right? So you say something first, the second is different for say something uh, is reverse order, okay? So this is roughly the, the, uh, the result. Then the, what we have learned is deep learning models good for predictions, to good for NLP, right? But if we consider the ontology structures, we can get gain even more advantages, right? Whatever, say 3%, 5%, right? It really depends on uh, you, what you look at this, uh, um, this uh, percentage uh, advantages. At the same time, we agree we need some overhead. We need to find or design some ontologies, right? But fortunately, as at least biomedical or health domains, we already have those ontologies, okay? So uh, then I, uh, I can spend the last next three minutes talking about the currently we are building a, a, a NSF center, okay? And with the other three uh, universities, uh, we are in the west, Oregon, and we have Florida in the south, CMU in the east, and uh, Missouri, UMKC in the, in the middle. So we try to build this consortium to focus on uh, deep learning, okay? This will be the first center for NSF funded for called the IOCRC, uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, industry uh, cooperative um, research center. Okay, so basically the idea is those companies, they will pay the membership fees. Okay, then we will do project with them together with our graduate student. Okay, and RSF also put some money in. Okay, so then we have these uh, four universities. Okay, and we kind of focus on at U of also focus on health business. Internet of Things and the cyber securities. Okay, so this is the main. So there are three phases. The first phase actually we just require three members um, in each side, each university. NSF give 150 k for each university. Okay, for five years. Then if you are everything doing good, then it goes to four members minimum and 200 k from uh, from NSF. Then uh, then the the um, the uh, the first three is so only have five, mem five members, blah, blah, right? So after three, phase, 15 years, suppose if you're still working on this kind of uh, problems, uh, you should self uh, support by yourself, right? So and uh, that should be no problem. But I think after 15 years, I'm close to retirement. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not that yet, but <laughs> I just think, yeah, if we are uh, continuing, continue but we're really pre uh, pretty confident for first five years because. Uh, Unless we require require us like uh, each uh, each university should have three members, right? Then when I began to talk with the industries uh, locally and and also in the West Coast or the whole world, if that's if that's some from China, I got 15. So this interest is much much higher than we expected. Okay, we need three, but we, I got 15. Yeah. So that's a uh, uh, that's current state. But if you, uh, if you, you have any industry uh, uh, partners or collaborations, if they are interested in the deep learning, right, this could be a one way to, to work. Uh, in, because we are at UFO and uh, yeah, you, you guys are kind of collaborative faculties in, inside of the center as well. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. And uh, uh, we, we try to do something and uh, use our previous experience right in the CBL and uh, yeah questions. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. We have uh, I, I think it, I, I, I love personal run the grade and I see there will be a lot of opportunities can be applied to yeah. Tool. Yeah. I mean a social network, you know, social media, communication, you know, social capital, I mean I in, in even news, yeah, right? Yeah, how, yeah. how we learn from news, how we consume and produce and etc. So uh, we have five minutes about five minutes yeah, if five you minutes, have any yeah. questions. Yeah. I was really curious in uh, that one of the projects that you described, the um, looking at their social activity, you had a chart that said the emails that they got yeah. and, and the topics. Lots of emails like actually, we, we have their uh, kind of, uh, because they are in a uh, private social network. Okay. okay. Then we basically, this, this sign IRB 
those all the messages they send each other are uh -huh. shared with us. And you could classify them by different categories, whether yes. they're encouraging, heckling, like yeah, yeah, you had yeah. a bunch of categories. And so are you then able to predict like people who got encouraging messages then did better versus people who oh. got heckling messages? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's interesting. That? Yeah, this is definitely very good questions. What we did is, yes, this kind of messages uh, we got actually, they, they normally write us either short or long, but not, not normally not long, right? Because they are in the study, all the human subjects come from uh, peace health employees, right? So they are more like colleagues or friends in some way, right? So then those short messages, what we did is we actually asked a human, right, uh, uh, to, to, to label them, okay? But we found some messages you can label with multiple topics, right? Because in one message you can you can you can you can be multiple topics, right? Some message is one topic. Yeah. Okay. So with this, then what we did actually we are not only just use the topic as a prediction features, right? Mm -hmm. We actually use the, the 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 actual text. Okay. So that's that's something. But in a way, it's uh, hard to explain whether which kind of message makes the prediction better because let's go back to the original problem about deep learning, it's a black box problem, mm -hmm. okay? So only thing we see is we have those features, whatever our structure, hierarchy we are flat, we put into the deep learning model, we get a prediction result. Exercise, yes, no, right? Okay. Right, so that's what we find. Then we do the sliding window, we see the average accuracy, but we cannot trace back to see, okay, which feature make more prediction power. That's actually the current thing we can ongoing work to see whether we can have a better way to explain what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But we have good questions, yeah. Any other question, maybe one or two? I think I'm most interested in yeah. your data visualizations. Yeah. Would you mind running through the logic with me on like how you, oh, shows, yeah. okay. how you visualize it? So I'm with, like, yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is what happened. So this data actually is not uh, is uh, talk about sports, right? Different sports, recreation sports, uh, uh, auto racing and motor racing, and also bat, uh, bat and uh, bat and ball. Okay, it's two two kind of sports, right? So then we, we kind of collect those uh, uh, those uh, um, uh, text informations uh, for the web, talking about different sports. Okay, so some sports mentioned the recreation sports drag some 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 uh, some uh, sorry some article mentioned that just the auto reaching some article mentioned the uh, 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 the bad and the bad but some articles mentioned all this kind of concept together right possible okay so then at the beginning we found that the overlap maybe very kind of small in some way right okay but after training okay then we see the kind of the overlapping or, or kind of directions. This is called the embeddings, right? Okay. We embed the data with the text information to the, uh, this is a kind of a lamp epoch in the computer science means we do iterations, okay? For train the system, uh, because we have the, the human labelings, right? whether this is talking about the recurrence or whether it's talking about the text, okay? So then we keep doing this, finally after 5,000, we see this kind of relationships is, th again, this is, Subclass, uh, sorry, superclass, recursion sports. This is two of the subclass. So they see they show this kind of relationship as well. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting because if you are talking about some some words overlap, right? So in the in the text, right, you see this at the beginning, but after training, they you, because they embed to the workspace or, or kind of matrix. So they finally those embedding the matrix with the deep learning trainings, you see the, the relationship. Yes. That's that's what we have to say. Yeah. One more question, last question. All right. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. So.